Welcome to the ninth annual Hall of Champions Induction Banquet. Uh, tonight is really a very special night for Long Beach City College and particularly for the area of athletics because we get to recognize and say welcome home to so many of our past athletes. Tonight we have eight outstanding competitors and coaches involved with Long Beach City College athletics who we're going to honor this evening. In addition, we're able to collectively recognize and honor six individuals who come from our emeritus category. And I promise you, as this evening unfolds tonight, I guarantee that this gymnasium will once again come alive with stories from the past, and all you old Vikings are going to have that Viking spirit again. It's going to be a special night, and we're really glad that you joined us. Uh, not all the inductees were able to join us this evening, but the vast majority of them are here, and we're thankful for their attendance. And to begin this evening, uh, we want to direct your attention over here to the northwest corner of the gymnasium so we can uh, welcome those honorees and family representatives who could attend as they take their seats. Uh, we like to call this part of our program our Parade of Champions, so let's get underway. Cue the music. Representing the sport of track and field during the 1950 and 1951 season, a record-setting high jumper, please welcome Joe Riddick. Our next inductee, represents the sport of tennis, a national junior college doubles champion from the class of 1947-1948. Please welcome Don Menke. And now, representing Gus Nickram, a 1946-1947 athlete who received great recognition both in the college and professional ranks as a competitor on the football field. Please welcome his children, representing him, Matt, Honoré, Jean, Maggie, and Gus, Jr. You're going to hear more about this special family later on this evening. Welcome. Three of our in emeritus inductees could not be with us this evening, but we do want to acknowledge them. First, a former athlete who pitched for LBCC to a conference and state championship in 1954, Jim Lee, a standout basketball player in 1960 who also had a great career as a coach and an athletic administrator, Jim Milhorn, and also Someone, our last emeritus inductee who could not be with us, was a skilled first baseman and a shortstop on our 1948 and 49 teams and also became one of the most successful coaches in more league history, and that's Walter Artie Boyd. Let's put our hands together for those three individuals. The rest of our honorees, are those individuals who attended and competed at Long Beach City College during a more recent time frame and will be officially inducted tonight. Let's now meet that group. Now entering the gym, let's welcome an athlete representing the sport of baseball, competing in 1976 and 1977. He had an outstanding career both at the college level and as a professional. Please welcome Dan Gospel. LBCC is fortunate to have dozens of state championships to its credit. One of those is because of our next inductee. He led his teammates in the sport of volleyball during the 1982 season. Please welcome Alan Treffery. Here's another outstanding football athlete and member of our national championship team. He played for LBCC during the 1995 and 1996 seasons. Please welcome Al Dorsey. Now entering the gymnasium is one of the best female athletes to come out of Long Beach City College. Representing the sport of water polo, 
please welcome the first two-time All-American for women's water polo from Long Beach, Cassie Zibich. Tonight, the sport of track and field is again represented by a hurdler on our 1980 and 1981 teams. To this day, he still holds a Long Beach City College record. Please give a round of applause for Bernie Holloway. Please welcome a local, local product who was a two-sport athlete with outstanding accolades in both football and track. He gave some of his best during the 1960 and 61 seasons. Willie Martin. You look like you could still jump a little bit, Willie. That I do. And now joining us, Another talented and outstanding performer of our 1975 and 1976 basketball teams, please welcome Dean Decker. Welcome, Dean. And our final inductee is being inducted in, into our hall under the coaches category. Please welcome an individual who has had one of the best runs ever as our head football coach from 1992 to 2002. Please welcome our current athletic director, Larry Reisbig. Congratulations, Larry. All right. Hey, is this room full of talent or what? I love this. Thank you, I appreciate that with the music. For just about three years now, Long Beach City College has been under the leadership of our superintendent president, Eloy Oakley. Uh, this is a president who, I just have to say, understands how to lead. He's always had a clear vision of what Long Beach City College should be doing and providing for our students and our community and keeps the entire staff focused on one thing and one thing only, and that's student success. Uh, this focus on student success is critical, both during prosperous times when we can expand programs and services, and particularly critical now when we find ourselves challenged by the current economic conditions. In the end, our decisions as administrators and staff are centered on our students who ultimately become the beneficiaries. Uh, President Oakley also understands the area of athletics, and we all appreciate his continued support. And, but also he understands the benefits that student athletes bring to the college, including important statistical information that supports this concept of student success. Uh, his leadership style is welcomed in our area, and we appreciate what he continues to provide for our student athletes, both in terms of facilities and the support that he gives them personally. So to officially greet us this evening, would you please welcome our Superintendent President, Eloy Oakley. Good evening, Vikings. It's great to see you all here, celebrating one of the proudest traditions that we have, and that is all of you. Our wonderful, wonderful history in athletics, and it's wonderful to have that opportunity to once a year get together and honor that history. That history continues to be made today. We have every semester a wonderful, wonderful cadre of excellent athletes. And what makes me proudest is that we have such great, great coaches, great, great teachers, and great, great leaders. And then you're honoring one today in Larry Reisbig, our athletic director. Yes, absolutely. It's not just about winning at Long Beach City College, although it helps. It doesn't hurt to put another banner on the wall. But the most important thing is what comes out of this college and what they learn here at this college. And our staff, our athletic staff, does a wonderful job of ensuring that no matter win or lose, our students are going to come out of here number one in their community. I also want to take this opportunity to thank 
the one person that makes our athletic program just look so professional and so well. And we have absolutely the very best dean of PE and athletics in the state of California. So let me take this opportunity to thank Dr. John Philpa. So I will get out of your way, but before I do that, you know, this college has been great for over 82 years, and it's met many, many challenges, and we are right in the middle of one of those challenges right now. And I need all of your support to help us get through this challenge. Uh, we are being squeezed from every single direction. We have one of the largest high school uh, uh, graduation classes that has ever descended upon California. We have one of the worst economic situations that has ever braced California, and we have CSU and UC cutting back. Our students are under a lot of pressure, and they need your support. They need your support through your voices, through your voices to the legislature and to the people of California that we need to keep places like Long Beach City College operating at 100%, especially now when our students need us the most. So I appreciate your support. And I'll use a little sports analogy because that usually works best. You know, we're in the third quarter and we're getting our butt kicked right now. But we will win this game because we have the very best talent and the very best students in the state of California. So thank you for being here and enjoy your evening. Thank you very much, Eli. I really appreciate it. Yeah, I'd now like to invite to the podium Ernest McBride, Jr to deliver tonight's uh, invocation. And Ernest is a member of our induction class of 2009 to the Hall of Champions, uh, known for both his football and track skills. And uh, aside from that, his excellent uh, support in the community coaching our youth, which I think we all can admire. He's not only a good man, but remains a very loyal friend to, the, to Long Beach City College. So Ernie, would you lead us in our invocation, please? You bow your heads, please. <clears throat> a Heavenly Father, would you bless this great institution, in this festivities we have in this evening of family, friends, acquaintances, in Hall of Fame inductees, past and present. <clears throat> Would you please bless the food that we're about to receive and bless those athletes and students that are serving us this evening. For Christ's sake, in Jesus' name we pray, amen. Thank you very much. Now, I'd also like to point out one more thing before we start our food service is that all of these individuals who are going to serve you tonight are current student athletes. And so they're on the same teams that you were. They're competing hard in the classroom. They're competing well on the fields and courts. So as they serve you, say hello to them, ask them what sport they're doing, and uh, now enjoy your meal and all the good company around your table. And we'll get started with the induction ceremony after we eat. Enjoy your evening. All right, thank you very much. Everybody enjoy their meal? I hope so. That was, uh, was well done. You know, I would like you to do, you've, I got a little uh, smattering of applause going here, but I'd like you to once again, if you would, take a look to the rear of the gymnasium here at all these great student athletes who did a great job of serving us, and I hope you'll once again thank them. Look at that, standing ovations. You need to get some of that while you're out on the courts and fields. Hey, these are the reasons we exist right here, our student athletes, and uh, we appreciate all of them giving up their Friday night to hang with a bunch of us oldsters. And uh, uh, you, you guys did a great job, so thank you very much. Now, a couple other quick intros, if I may. You know, I just want to say that uh, as the Dean of Physical Education and Athletics, I mean, I just, I work with one of the greatest staffs around, and they're just great colleagues, and I see them every day, and they, they really, truly understand the concept of being a team, just like the rest of you did when you were competing here at Long Beach City College. And I'd like to introduce a few of them to you, if I may. First, a couple of the people who really run the place are the, are the staff in the athletic office, and I, I would like to have Christy Lutz, 
Lucy Romero and Chris Ruiz stand and be recognized. Uh, they keep us all straight. Where's Chris? Wave your hand, Chris. There you are. Thank you so much for all the things you do. In addition, I'd like to thank the Banquet Planning Committee, members of the Hall of Champions Committee uh, for putting things together. We have some folks from our media services back here. We have some students from our sound reinforcement group. And, uh, and could I just have anybody who serves on our Hall of Champions Committee uh, to wave your hand, and Chuck may recognize you again later, but I just want to say thank you for all, all you did to make tonight a reality. Some of the special introductions I'd like to make is we have a couple of our Board of Trustees members with us tonight, and I'd first like to acknowledge someone who is a member of our Hall of Fame. He's the Vice President of our Long Beach City College Board of Trustees and represents Area 5, Dr. Tom Clark. Tom, where are you? We had our President with us, Mark Bowen. He had to leave. He had another commitment, but I want to thank him for showing up. And uh, our other board members are much like Tom here, who support everything we do, and we appreciate them continuously. You've already met our Superintendent President, Eloy Oakley, but thanks again, Eloy, for giving up your time. And I, hopefully tonight was a little more relaxing for you than some of the other challenges you're faced with right now. So thank you so much. Also, um, when we put on events like this, we always have members of the community show up, and I want to thank them for attending. Uh, 2003 inductee into our Hall of Champions also just happens to be a member of our Long Beach City Council. He represents the 6th district, district, and I'd please, please welcome Councilman D. Andrews. Where are you, D? Stand up. D and I used to teach across the hall from each other at Poly in the early 70s. And D, do you have any of those old polyester suits left? I'd, I'd love to have a couple of those things. Man, you were always sharp as could be. Uh, and it's always fun to be able to introduce former mayors when they're in attendance. And some of you were probably had this individual as your mayor when you were performing here as an athlete. And uh, former mayor Eunice Sato, I know she is here. Eunice, where are you? You stand. There she is back there, Eunice. Thank you. And thank you, Bill Alexander, for keeping the mayor out and active. That's, that's really uh, appreciative. I'm also very fortunate to work with really the best physical education staff that you can find around. And they're a great group of caring individuals. They know what they're doing. They love athletes. They take care of them. And I'd like to acknowledge those who are in attendance, both the administrators and uh, some of the staff. First, our uh, department head of physical education, Will Shaw. Will, where are you? Thank you, Will. Got a few fans. Are they taking your psychology class, Will? Okay, all right. Cheer loud for them. It might help your grade. You never know. And our, our men's athletic director I introduced before, Larry Reisbig. He'll be honored later. Stand up, Larry. And Connie, thanks for working through this week with all the crutches and all. Where are you? Connie Sears, our women's athletic director. Where, there she is back there working the sound. Thank you, Connie. And could I have any of our current coaches or faculty members who are in attendance please stand up as a group. I, we want to acknowledge you. Jerry Jaso, Jake Jacobson, Mike Reisvig, Gary Anderson, Dave Casa. Thank you so much. These are the people who do all the great things for the student athletes on a daily basis. Thank you. Also from the community, I want to thank the Press-Telegram for showing up tonight and our own Viking newspaper. Yeah, it's, they still have that on the stands here. And Dave Felton, thanks for the great uh, article in the paper today to kick this off. We appreciate that very much. And there are a few members of my fellow members of the Long Beach Century Club here tonight. If you don't know about the Century Club, some of you may have been honored by them in your days. This is an organization that's 55 years strong, and they still support amateur athletics throughout the city. So. Any of my fellow uh, Century Club members in attendance tonight? I saw Sam Demas somewhere. He's there and a few others, but thank you for continuing to acknowledge Bill Smitherins here, I know, and support amateur athletics. As long as I'm giving a, a, a couple plugs here, I would like to give one, and I think it's uh, somewhere in your program there tonight. We have an annual fundraiser that helps support our athletic programs. And on May 13th, uh, right down the street here at Lakewood Country Club, we're going to have our 27th annual major fundraiser golf tournament. And if you'd like to get involved in that, just come up and see me afterwards, either as a participant or 
a donor in some way, we'd love to have you get involved. And this year we're going to uh, put on this tournament in memory of two individuals who some of you may have had contact with who recently passed away, uh, Russ Jordan and Dr. John Cashwabara, who was our team physician for so many years. We're, we're doing that in their memory, but we're also honoring for that tournament uh, Mr. Sam Demas, a member of your Hall of Champions and uh, a great, great athlete in his day too. So we hope uh, uh, you will get involved in that. If you have interest, please just let me know later. Uh, that's all done under our foundation, uh, Athletic Associates, to help raise funds. But as long as I'm talking about the foundation, I would like to introduce uh, two individuals, and I think they're still here. Yes, they are. Dr. Virginia Baxter as the executive director of the foundation and our assistant director, Dana Walsh. Please stand and be recognized. Uh, they, they raise money all year long for all kinds of causes across our campus. And uh, uh, Dr. Baxter uh, has turned that organization into what about 15 years ago was about a, a, a $100,000 to $200,000 operation to how much today, Ginny? $10 million. So that tells you how we're helping students throughout here. The main goal of the Hall of Champions is, uh, Committee is to raise awareness of the rich athletic tradition we have here at Long Beach City College. A, a secondary goal, though, is obviously to raise some funds. And if you look in your program, there on page two or three, whatever it is, you'll notice that there are kind of various levels of giving. And uh, some of you, you know, may, may want to get involved some way. That allows us to expand the hall, improve the facilities here, and just uh, assist, assist our student athletes in ways that uh, we can't otherwise through these tough budget times. So if any of you would like to know more about that, uh, see Connie or Larry or Chuck or Ginny or Dana or any of our coaches and we'll tell you how to get involved. And uh, thank you for, for thinking about that. And uh, that's enough of the paid commercial amounts, announcement, I guess, but uh, we, we just want to give you something to think about. And I have one final introduction to kind of before we get things going tonight. and. And uh, over 10 years ago, the Hall of Champions was still kind of a concept. And we were talking about how can we just honor and recognize and keep this rich athletic tradition going. And, and at that time, Chuck McFerrin was our uh, men's athletic director. And under Chuck's leadership, the Hall of Champions became a reality. And although Chuck retired six or seven years ago, uh, we still don't let him get away. We keep him involved and we ask him to stay connected because of his expertise and his commitment to this uh, particular activity and his love for, for student athletes and obviously because of his leadership. Uh, this is the ninth induction banquet and it all began uh, with Chuck and it's because he likes to do what he does best and that's to champion athletics and outstanding athletes. And Chuck and I on a personal note have been working together in one capacity with activities or teachers or something since 1975. We've been collaborating collaborating on things and I, I still enjoy working with Chuck every day because he's a guy who just likes to get things done and I'm proud to call him my friend and Chuck would you come on up to the podium and let's get this induction ceremony anyway underway. Thank you very much everybody. Well, welcome, and uh, great to have everybody here. This will be a great night. They always are. A lot of great uh, opportunities for people to connect and visit and share stories and tell lies and all that kind of stuff. So, But it's a good time. Uh, I hope you had a chance uh, during the reception to maybe browse the uh, hall and look at some of the plaques and look up at the, the banners uh, that were uh, just newly installed. Uh, with all of the championships that we've had here at the college and uh, the wall that has all the Olympians uh, from the college. So it's quite a, quite a history out there hanging on those walls. So sometime when you're here, if you, if you didn't get a chance tonight and you got to come to a ball game or something like that, spend some time and look, look around because it's really good. I hope you had a chance to uh, uh, visit a little bit with the student athletes, uh, our current student athletes that were waiters tonight. Uh, they really enjoy doing this. We like, we like to involve our students as much as we can. And I, just give them a hand. It's a good idea. I, uh, I, I know on the back page we uh, have uh, recognition of 
the wine that was donated uh, by, by uh, Spagatini uh, Jazz Club Grill. And uh, Kerry was uh, the, one of the co-owners there, was inducted last year, and was so gracious to uh, offer up uh, the wine for the evening. And so we thank him for that. And then, yes. <clears throat> and I know she should be sitting at her table enjoying this, but she's not. But if you enjoyed the dinner as much as I enjoyed the dinner, how's that food? Pretty good? Good. Anyway, uh, over on this side of the room, uh, if, if, she's, if you're going to host something and want to caterer, Cindy Gallagher, her number's in the, in the, on the back page here. Uh, Cindy can go ahead and uh, set that up for you. So I hope you, if you don't talk to her tonight, may give her a call and uh, let uh, her catering company um, take care of your uh, needs. So they're very good. I want to honor the uh, people who are here tonight that were inducted at previous Hall of Champions. We've got 17, I believe, here. If they've all uh, shown up, they were on the roster to be here tonight. So I'd like each of you, when I call your name, to stand, remain standing, hold your applause, and we'll just uh, applaud all of them at the end. I'm going to introduce them by class. Our first induction class was in uh, 2002. So uh, Bob Severtlick, volleyball. Earl McCullough, hold your applause. Earl McCullough, football track. Uh, Greg Harris, baseball. Class of 2003 is Jeff Smith, football and track. Bill Frazier, basketball. D. Andrews, football and track. 2004, Joe Lanning, track and football. Dave Frost, baseball. 2005, Bob Myers, baseball. 2006, Sam Demas, football. Kenny Booker, basketball. Tom Clark, uh, 2007, Tom Clark, track. Bill Barnes, basketball. 2008, Paul Chafe, football and golf. 2009, Henry Andrews, football and track. And Jake Jacobson, football and volleyball. Let's uh, welcome these Hall of Champions. That's a, that's a very illustrious group of people that was standing uh, in front of you there. You know, we, we'll do a lot of talking tonight uh, about these athletes from the past, but I always like to take a moment, I call it my, uh, 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 Dr. Eloy has his uh, state of the college, I have my athletic state of the college that I like to do uh, at this banquet, and it's kind of a, 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 a information about how we're doing right now. I mean, these are people today who will, you know, 10, 15 years or so down the road be considered for our Hall of Champions. But since we, meet, since we met last time, so last uh, spring, a year ago spring and the fall, uh, this is what's been accomplished here at City College in athletics. Uh, the, volley, the men's volleyball team won their seventh state championship in volleyball. Um, and you know what, I got a feeling that in that Treffery group back there, there's a few guys that maybe played on a past state championship team. If that's so, would you please rise right now? Anybody back there that played on a state championship team? Very good. Our current coach, Randy Tutor, who is a, a past uh, Viking player here, was a setter like Alan. I couldn't be here tonight, he's very sorry, but they had a, uh, a match with Pierce, and you guys in volleyball know Pierce is always a tough competitor, and uh, they, so that's where they are. But uh, they, they won the state championship last year, they've won it three out of the last six years, and they're currently ranked number one in the state right now. So if you hadn't had a chance to get out and see this year's volleyball team, they're very good. They're very young, but they're very good. We also had a state runner-up in men's water polo. And uh, that was their ninth consecutive trip to the state championships. And I, I don't have the number they've won. Dave, how many state championships? Two, two in the last uh, so years, but five total, but uh, runner up if they didn't win it. They're in the championship game almost every year. The women's water polo team have won, uh, is my, am I correct, in state championship six of the last seven? Is that right? Not, that's too much, probably. But very well. They've, they've done, 
They've done it three recently, I know, so they've done very well. Our golf championship, our conference championships were in uh, baseball. They had a 30-win season last year, and of course they won the conference in women's water polo and, and men's water polo and men's volleyball. Individuals, we had numerous people make first team all conference. We had seven of our athletes. Now realize we play in 18 sports, but we had seven Long Beach City College players that were the conference player of the year, seven out of 18 sports. That's pretty amazing. Ten, ten of our athletes uh, in the last year made all state. One was the state player of the year. We've had ten qualify as all Americans and we've had three of our coaches selected uh, conference coach of the year. So that's our current athletic state of the union and I think that deserves a round of applause what they've done. I would like to have our selection, I know John mentioned them, but I'd like to have our selection committee uh, stand and again hold your applause till they're all up. I'd like you to see the people that are uh, having to make these decisions on who are in our, uh, in our uh, Hall of Champions. Gary Anderson, and while Gary uh, is standing, let me just uh, recognize that Gary uh, a week ago was inducted into the California Community College Basketball Hall of Fame. So Gary's standing, uh, John Philpaw, uh, Jake is on our selection committee, Joe Lanning, Ernest McBride, Bob Myers, Connie Sears, Will Shaw, Jeff Smith, and I believe that's all that's, all that's here tonight uh, on our committee. But these are the people that sit down and read all the resumes and make the selections. Okay, let's get into some inductees. The first category are the emeritus. And the, um, the emeritus category, we started about five years ago. To be an emeritus inductee, you have to have been a participant at the college, listen carefully, you have to have been a participant at the college 50 or more years ago to be a, considered as an emeritus inductee. And we can do that here because we started in 1927 and we didn't get this started till around 2000. So there was a lot of years that people weren't being recognized. And so we started this emeritus group and we inducted six. And if you look in your program, uh, you'll see the six uh, that are mentioned there. And we have uh, two of the inductees here and a family of the third. And so uh, just briefly, they had an induction ceremony out in the lobby about a month ago. And that was their time to really get up and uh, share and talk about their memories and, and uh, what City College meant to them. But I do want to recognize uh, those that are here tonight. And he walked in earlier through the door, Joe Riddick, track athlete in 50 and 51, uh, who was uh, one of the top high jumpers. He jumped six, seven and three quarters back in the early 50s. And that was, that was getting up in the air. Uh, went on and, and uh, went to UCSB and uh, competed up there in basketball and track. He was, uh, played on the first Long Beach State volleyball team. It was a club team at the time and then it evolved into a college team. And uh, he uh, played for years uh, in the Long Beach uh, Masters volleyball team and uh, gave uh, uh, about 38 years of his life being a teacher, uh, coach uh, in the city of Long Beach uh, for, the, for our youth and uh, most recently was a track starter for the, for the high school track meet. So Joe Riddick, would you stand and be recognized? Joe Riddick. You see the comments here about Jim Milhorn. He's living in Arizona. He was here for the luncheon but he wasn't able to make it back and, and, and Artie is not able to be here tonight. Neither is Jim Lee. Uh, Don Minke, I want to jump down to Don Minke. You can see his picture there. Tennis in 1947 and 48. He played on two of our, our top ranked City College teams. He along with John Flights won a national doubles championship. He went on to play at Cal Berkeley and uh, went on to uh, won the Long Beach City Open doubles championship later. National Senior Olympics bronze medal in racquetball. And again, another person who gave his life to helping the, the youth of Long Beach with being a counselor, teacher, coach, Don Minke, if he'd stand and be recognized. Thank you. 
Now this next group, I'm going to break precedent here a little bit because, because the, the emeritus have their own induction. They, they talk and I say you don't speak at the banquet, but there's something pretty special, really special, about this next group. And when I just tell you a little bit about uh, how they got here tonight, and this is the Nickram, this is uh, Gus Nickram. So I'll, I'll, I'll say a few things here about him. You can see his picture there. Uh, looks like the kind of guy I didn't, wouldn't want to come to, to hit me. Uh, he was a, a, a lineman here. He was a captain, most valuable player for our 47 team. He was on the junior college uh, uh, Southern California All-Star uh, squad and uh, went on up to play at Oregon in 48 and 49. He was played with Norm Van Brocklin up there. Some of you can remember that name. He played in the Cotton Bowl in 49. Um, voted uh, the best defensive lineman in the West. Played a little bit in the pros. And was very involved up in the city of Lompoc. Owned a sporting, a sporting goods business. And really had a giving heart for the youth up there. They named a little league field after him. Just one of those community people that you know communities love to have so so that's that's Gus Nickram but Gus has been gone uh, about 20 years and uh, his family is here tonight and uh, this there's 21 here tonight for him and and you, you know I have a family you all have families to think about that that your family will rally like that for you that many years after you've been gone, they've come from, listen to this, they've come from San Francisco, Bakersfield, Chicago, Arizona, Idaho, Salt Lake, Vail, Colorado, and San Diego. So I'm going to have Gene Nickram, one of the sons, come up and just speak for a moment about what City College meant to his dad, Gus. So Gene, if you'll come forward. Can I have that Nickram family stand up over there? Just all of you stand up, please. And fam family and friends that are the, for the Nickrams. That's very heartwarming to me. Well, Chuck kind of caught me off guard when he said uh, he was going to break precedence and I got out of the car. I said, I got to go talk to that guy real quick. And I'm like, God, maybe I shouldn't have went and talked to him. <laughs> but, uh, um, as, as Chuck said, we came from a lot of different places, and it's, it's good to be together as a family. We're missing one, but uh, you'll we'll hopefully see him later tonight. When I shared with everybody at, at the luncheon um, what I felt that my dad would want me to share, it was, it was pretty, um, it was somewhat emotional, because as I explained to uh, the people that were there, uh, my dad was raised by a single mom in the, uh, in the late 40s, and uh, it was not that common. And she was a working nurse, and she used to work a lot, and she would be gone a lot, and she would need places for my dad to go. And he would go to aunts and uncles, and he would go to friends, and he would go to the ballpark. And he met a tremendous amount of people at the ballpark. And he had experiences with coaches at Long Beach Wilson and at Long Beach City College. And those coaches uh, molded him to be a tremendous father and a tremendous advocate for youth sports. Uh, everywhere we went, um, he found the community of athletes and athletics, and that was where he was at home. And, uh, you know, as, as, we never knew a lot about his, his success as a player. He didn't talk a lot about it. He always wanted to focus on the kids in this community that he was serving at the time, and what they were doing, and what they were about, and how they were going to excel. And we learned a great deal about his service um, because of that. And he learned that from Long Beach, from Long Beach Wilson and from Long Beach City College. Um, and I thought a lot about different things. And you know, recently I was thinking about um, people talk about comments of it taking a village to raise a child. And when my wife and I had our children, I didn't think, I didn't think it took a village till they got a little older. And as they get a lot older, it takes, it takes it takes a state, a county, it takes, it takes a nation sometimes. But um, this was my dad's village. And uh, as a family, we are forever uh, indebted to Long Beach, the, the community of Long Beach. Uh, we're indebted to your grandparents uh, and their grandparents 
and uh, the lineages that are in this community that have been here for so long because they are the ones that had such an integral part in creating the person that, was, uh, that we were blessed enough to have as a father. So for that, we thank you tremendously and are so appreciative that we are here and able to be a part of this and that my dad is a member in your hall. So is that good enough? Man? Thank you very much. Great. That's All of the inductees tonight are receiving uh, this certificate of recognition from uh, Alan Lowenthal. It's presented to whoever the inductee is on the occasion of Long Beach City College Foundation's ninth Annual Hall of Champions induction ceremony for being an inductee and for your contribution to LBC Athletics, uh, signed by Alan Lowenthal. Thank so, you. Thank you. I get one more thing I forgot. Okay. La lastly, and I, I should have done this earlier, Mom, I'm sorry, but my mom is here with us. She's 85 years old, and, uh, and she was, uh, uh, I think, the salt of my dad's earth. And um, we're so glad that she's still with us and that she was able to take part in this. And I know that my dad is smiling down upon her as she's here with her children. So That's great. Man. The class of 2010, each will receive a, a plaque that you see up front that's identical to the plaque that'll go up in the, on the Hall of Champions walls. They'll also receive a, a life pass to all Long Beach City College athletic events and this uh, certificate of recognition from Senator Lowenthal. The overview of the eight inductees tonight, if we just kind of look at them as a group, we have one from the 60s, two from the 70s, two from the 80s, two from the 90s, and one from the 21st century, our first one in Cassie. We have, we have six different sports represented. These athletes, when they were here during their stay, want, help us win 11 conference championships, five state championships, two national championships, Three of our people here tonight were selected as all state players. Three were all Americans. One was a USA Olympic trials finalist. And there were eight years of professional uh, experience among these athletes. So they're quite an accomplished group that we're recognizing tonight. So with that, let's begin with our first inductee. I'm going to skip around. I'm not going to follow the program exactly tonight. So you have to kind of turn the pages if you want to follow along with whoever we're talking about. But we're going to lead off here with Dan Gospel. Dan, stay seated. I'm going to say a few words. Dan played in uh, 1976 and 7. We were fortunate that he didn't sign a pro contract right after he got out of Lakewood High School because he was drafted fairly high by the Angels, a seventh round draft in that 75-76 winter draft. But he decided he wanted to go on to college. And it was fortunate for us because he came here and he participated on teams that won both his years here, conference championships and a state championship in his freshman year and a final four in the state in his sophomore year. In his sophomore year, Joe Hicks used to have an award called the Ball Players Ball Player Award. And it was, he would ask the players, who on this team do you most respect on and off the field? Uh, the person that you most admire, the person you would most, most want to be like in your best day, and uh, Dan received that award. He was a first team all-conference selection that year in his sophomore year, and uh, got drafted again after his sophomore year by the Mets, but he chose again to continue on with school and went on over to uh, UCLA, played ball there where he was a captain one year, and while he was there, he set Bruin records in doubles and runs scored and uh, finished up at UCLA and got drafted again. I guess he figured there's not any place I really need to go to school right now. I got my bachelor's degree, and, uh, and I think it was in economics, and uh, then uh, signed with the Padres. And uh, each year, he was in uh, the minor leagues for four years, but each year he rose. First year he was rookie, then he went single A, double A, and he ended up in his last year playing in Hawaii in the Pacific Coast League, which was triple A, which in those days, it was a, a much better brand of ball at that level. I mean, you're right, you're right there nipping at the majors. And maybe he'll share with you why he chose uh, to just kind of walk away at that point. And uh, returned home, uh, has an insurance business, 
uh, was helped out uh, down in uh, Murrieta, where he was the Calvary Murrieta High School coach, led them to some championships, and was twice voted the coach of the year in that league. So at this time, let's welcome Dan Gossipel. Thanks, Chuck. I'll keep it quick. <laughs> Pardon me, I need these glasses. I don't want to leave anybody out, but thank you uh, so much. Um, thank you, Long Beach City College. Thank you uh, to the selection committee. This is truly a, an honor for me. Uh, and I also want to thank my wonderful patient wife who sat through so many baseball games from high school, college, professionally, and then we had three boys who played high school and college ball, and she got to sit through all those games, uh, Phil, Doug, and Charlie. <laughs> and those boys married three of the sweetest gals a, a guy could ever have as daughter-in-laws. They really are sweeties. Uh, my family, you see, uh, I think, four tables that we have there. And I just uh, I thank you for your love and support. Uh, for Just to be here is just uh, really, really cool. Uh, as I reflect back on my athletic career, I thank the Lord for putting the men in my path that he did. And I think that's going to be a resounding theme tonight, that as these men get up here, they're going to say that there was somebody somewhere that came into their life. Uh, and sometimes it's just something that lights a fire underneath you that causes you to excel, or in my case, sometimes to decel, as sometimes I was a little out of control, as my coaches we will um, uh, com uh, concur with. With that, uh, I have four past coaches here tonight. My brother-in-law, Jerry Gray, coached me on Pony Leg. Uh, Bob Myers coached me here at Long Beach City College with Mike Davis, and at UCLA, Gary Adams, and I am honored to have you all here tonight. Uh, great men, thank, yeah, absolutely. Great men and great coaches. Uh, the honor tonight is a shared honor, of course, with those men. And to Long Beach City College, the legacy for academics and athletics uh, is unsurpassed. Long Beach City College created a culture that provided so many tools for young men and women to uh, succeed. And that's, again, uh, even in the classroom, I remember Coach Shaw. Uh, I had biology with, with uh, Coach Surf the Murph over here. Uh, it was just a, a culture that really inspired and, and created an environment for us to do well. But then on the field, it was that leadership that we got from our coaches. Uh, I'm so thankful um, that I had the college coaches that I had. Uh, I was uh, uh, a, a bit uh, aggressive and uh, at times, in fact, when we got together to share a course, they bring up those times when I was too aggressive, uh, you know, trying to take that extra base or something, and I said, yeah, I, I deserve that. It, it, uh, uh, I was a little out of control, but I had those men that uh, instilled in me the qualities of leadership that, that they showed me and showed all of us. Uh, I'm so thankful to have them. Uh, let me kind of wind the clock back, and then we'll wind it forward for a little bit. Uh, Bob Myers, he always had his pulse on the hand of his players. I mean, Bob, man, his radar was up, and he was there instructing, and he literally poured his life into us, into his players. Uh, with Bob, uh, he meant so much to me. In, in, the, in April of 1977, I lost my dad to uh, his battle with cancer. And Bob Myers did what Bob Myers does. He was... Um, more than a coach. He uh, really was a man that, boy, I could, that, that just uh, stayed with me, built, you know, just steadied me. And uh, it was just an honor to have a coach that did what Bob did. And then uh, a year later, I ended up uh, going over to UCLA. Uh, coach Gary Adams, I was on a three quarter ride and finished my junior year after the season was over. Uh, I sat down uh, in the clubhouse, and Gary came over and said, Dan, we're going to increase you to a full scholarship for next year. Uh, and that was a time that that uh, money was really needed. It was really cool. Uh, I ended up getting married during my senior year. So my wife and I, we were poor. In fact, we were so poor, we got burglarized, and the burglars left stuff at our house. <laughs> You 
You know, our coaches, they were always encouraging. We knew where they were, uh, where the, we stood with them because we always got the best from them. We never, there was never, ever a doubt that we were going to get the best from our coaching staff. Uh, in fact, uh, Gary, when I, when I told him thank you for to increasing my scholarship, he says, and I'll always forget this, and Gary, you'll remember it. He says, at UCLA, we always want to increase, not subtract. Uh, both Bob and Gary are great leaders, always encouraging their players to keep striving in life as well as baseball, giving us direction and guidance of which I will always be thankful. Thank you very, very much. And now being in the Long Beach City College Hall of Fame, this is awesome. For the last time, thank you coaches, thank you Long Beach City College, go Vikings and enjoy the rest of your evening. Here's this pass, this okay. proclamation. Walking up right now is Russell Peltier. Russell's a pitcher on our current Long Beach City College team. He was uh, like uh, Dan, Lakewood High graduate, and he's going to come up. He's a sophomore team captain on our baseball team, and he's going to present the plaque to Dan, and our sports information director is going to get a picture of the two of them together. Congratulations, Dan. Leaving baseball and going to football, our next uh, inductee is going to be Albert Dorsey. Albert uh, played in 1995 and 96 here. Uh, he was a starting middle linebacker both years for us, and, and he started on that 19, as a freshman on that 1995 national championship team. He was first team All-Mission Conference both years. In his sophomore year, he was the conference defensive player of the year. He was an All-State player and an All-American player. He accepted a, a scholarship to UC Berkeley, go Bears. Again, starting inside linebacker both years. Senior year, he led the Bears in tackles. He received Pac-10 honors. He was selected to play in the Hula Bowl uh, All-Star Game, and he uh, completed his bachelor's degree. After leaving Cal, he played professionally with the Los Angeles Avengers in the Arena League. 2001, he began a coaching career, coaching in local high schools, three different schools. And then from 2006 to 2009, we could see him at the Coliseum where he was a USC administrative assistant coach under Pete Carroll. 2008, he received an NFL minority fellowship where he was given, I guess this is a, a, a blessing to work with the Oakland Raiders. <laughs> Who really knows about that? But he did that for a year and he's currently now working at Long Beach City College. He's made the full cycle, he's back with us and uh, coaching with us and uh, completing his master's degree. So Albert Dorsey. I'm a man of many words, of less words. So uh, let's, uh, let's do this. Here we go, here we go. First off, I'd like to thank the committee for <clears throat> for proving. Excuse me. Where am I? At? Where am I? At? Okay. Here we go. Let's do this again. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame committee for providing me with incredible honor. I would also like to thank friends and family who joined me in this evening. I appreciate your support. I'd also like to thank the coaches who gave me a chance to motivate and believe in me. I also want a special thanks to my wife, my amazing wife, who has been through me through highs and lows and showed me unconditional love for over 20 years. I love you. Okay. <laughs> Thoughts would be easy. Man, I'm used to co you know, doing coaching. You know, a bunch of players. I'm do I can do it. Okay, here we go. Oh. <laughs> My journey at Long Beach City uh, sh shaped me by some very uh, positive and motivating people in my life. My high school counselor, Ms. C Ms. Sue Crinkle, and her husband joined me tonight. She helped me connect me to at Long Beach City. 
and encouraging me to take the risk to go to Palm Springs to come to Long Beach City, you know, to get out of my comfort zone. Frankly, I was kind of disapp uh, kind of disappointed because in high school, you know, I, I didn't get a D1 scholarship, but you know, little did I know, the experience would shape me the rest of my life in an amazing way. It also taught me trust, support, and lifelong friendships. A funny, a funny story. Uh, when I was coming coming to uh, Long Beach City, I came to play tailback. You know, you know, my dad played tailback, my uncle played tailback. You know, we, everybody played tailback. So, uh, high school, I was a pretty good tailback. And when I came here, I thought I would be like the next. Uh, Errol Campbell or Jerome Bittis, one of the big, you know, one of the big tailbacks. But um, for the first couple of days, I was that guy. Then a guy from Florida named Sean Bain came in the picture. This kid was unbelievable. Right? Probably on 4-4, Barry Sanders skills. And I was just like, well, this is going to be tough. So that day, well, after that practice, Coach Reisbeck came up to me and said, Dorsey, you either you can be a second string running back or you can probably start a linebacker. I thought about it and I knew I was going to start running back. So I moved over to the defense side and it's the best thing that ever happened to me. <laughs> My confidence grew academically and academically and athletically. Being a member of a championship team, I learned valuable life lessons from coaches, teammates, and coaches, and, and teachers. Lumbee City College is a community that cares about, its member, about their members and it genuinely, truly felt. I applied my skills, I attained university life, and after graduating, my desire to coach and was influenced by the positive interactions I had at Long Beach City. It was a good environment that encouraged students to seek the highest levels possible. I'm truly humbled to be inducted to the Hall of Fame. I'm in good company. Uh, this memory will be cherished like the, the many memories I had at Long Beach City. Thank you. I got a feeling that it was a little easier to tackle a 220 pound fullback than it was to get through that talk, wasn't it, Albert? Yes. Yeah, okay. Coming up to award him his plaque is a, a current starting inside linebacker on this year's Long Beach City College football team, Holman Fa'atili. Uh, who came to us from the state of Washington, plays a little fullback as well, and we have high hopes for him next year on our team. Thanks, Albert. Now we go to the sport of basketball. Dean Decker, who was a player here in 75 and 76, uh, he was the prototype guard. I'm sure that Coach Frazier, who's here tonight for him, would uh, attest to that. He could handle the ball. He could find the open player. He was accepted by his teammates as a leader. And uh, he just played the, the uh, consummate role as a guard on a football team. And the evidence of that is that both years, he went to San Diego State. Both years he was at City. Both years he was an Aztec. He was the captain of the team. Uh, he uh, set a uh, city college assist record, which, is still, which still exists. Uh, what, 35 years later, he still holds the assist record at Long Beach City College. He led the PC2A conference when he was at San Diego in assist both, both years. And he led uh, city college in San Diego to conference championships both years he was at the college. So we're talking about a fellow here who uh, surrounds himself with winning. Uh, as a Viking, he was a first team all-conference player. In 1976, he, he was an instrumental player in our state championship. 
Uh, he was the state playoff most valuable player and a JC All-American. Let's welcome Dean Decker. Thank you, Chuck. I'll, I'll try to keep this to under five minutes, but uh, <clears throat> excuse me, a very good friend of mine and former teammate Guy King said that he specifically came tonight to hear me talk because we played together here for two years and he listened to me scream and holler and he never understood a word I said. So he wanted to come tonight and see if I could actually talk. So uh, Guy, here I am. <laughs> I'd, like, I'd like to thank the committee for this honor. I am truly honored and humbled by it. I was not a great basketball player, but I hope this does speak to my character, my desire to win, and a commitment to excellence. So thank you very much. <clears throat> Just to kind of go through, I, I do want to acknowledge some people real quick. Some have already been acknowledged, but Coach Frazier and Betty. Betty Frazier, thank you for being here. I got inducted into my high school Hall of Fame five years ago, and, and Coach Frazier introduced me, and I said thank you to Coach, uh, Coach Frazier and his wife Barbara. And Coach Fraser was sitting in the very back of the place, and he goes, it's Betty, it's Betty. And I haven't slept for five years, but she forgave me tonight, so thank you. I appreciate it, Betty. <laughs> I'd like to thank Coach, uh, Coach Anderson and his wife Kathy for being here. I'd like to thank my Aunt June and my cousin Pam for being here. I really appreciate family being here. I'd like to thank two former teammates, uh, Guy King and Jeff Peters, for being here, and Bad Jack, uh, Jeff's dad, for being here. Everybody knows David Schoenberg. David Schoenberg's been my, uh, my best friend for almost 35 years now. Thanks for being here. And a very special woman in my life, Mary Peel. Thank you very much for being here. Uh, just to share a few anecdotes uh, about Long Beach City College. My first experience with Long Beach City College was my junior year of high school. I got moved up to the varsity basketball team about halfway through the season. And we were playing our first Moore League game here at Long Beach City College. And it was just after halftime in the JV game, and I had to use the restroom. So I walked back into the locker room to go use the restroom, and I was coming out, and I was met by a gentleman named Jack Groves. Does anybody remember Jack Groves? Well, Jack tried to escort me out of the locker room through a side door and was, wasn't going to let me back in the gym because he didn't think I played on the team. Because I was about 5'6 and weighed about 128 pounds, and he said, there's no way you're on that team, kid. Get out of here. So that was my introduction to Long Beach City College. Uh, my second introduction to Long Beach City College, I had the privilege to play one year for Coach Frazier at Wilson High School, and then he moved on and replaced Lute Olson, who everyone, I'm sure, remembers Lute Olson. Uh, I had a pretty good senior year of high school, and I was being recruited by such uh, juggernauts as Cal Poly San Luis Obispo, and uh, Gonzaga, which back then was an NEIA school, not what they are today. And Coach Frazier took me out to, to dinner and said, well, you know, we're real excited about you coming to Long Beach City College. And I said, Coach, I got offers. I got uh, Cal Poly San Luis Obispo. Gonzaga's interested in me. And Coach Frazier looked at me and very simply said, you know, I'm offering you the opportunity to play at Long Beach City College. And uh, I took him seriously, and that was the end of the conversation, and I was coming to Long Beach City College, so thank you, Coach. Uh, two other, just two other, <laughs> two other things very quickly. Uh, in our sophomore year, we were playing in a tournament in Antelope Valley, and, you know, I was pretty competitive. I mean, I, I wasn't a great player, but I didn't like to lose. I mean, I, losing was not acceptable. And we were playing in a tournament, and we'd won the semifinal game, and, I was a gym rat my whole life, but I, I wasn't feeling good or, or whatever, so I went back to the hotel, and Guy was my roommate, Guy King, and he stayed for the game, and he came back to the room, and I was kind of half asleep watching TV, and I said, well, and he goes, well, I think we can take them. He goes, you know, they're not bad. It was a team from Arizona, and I don't, I don't know what they were ranked in Arizona, but uh, he goes, but man, they're guards. He said, their guards are unbelievable. He said, you got your hands full. I, I don't know if you can do it. Well, we went out the next night. Their guards were so bad, they couldn't get the ball past half court for the first six minutes of the game. We beat them by 60 points. Guy King took five years off my life. Thank you, Guy. But uh, it was all good. And then the last, you know, the last you know, thing I want to share, uh, we did win a state title that sophomore year. And I, you know, it speaks to our team, and I think it speaks to Long Beach City College as an institution. But, uh, you know, we didn't have a real talented team. Uh, we won the Metro Metropolitan Conference and did not have anybody 
selected to the first team all conference on the first vote to which coach Frazier and coach Anderson said you guys better count again <laughs> and uh, you know finally you know they, they changed it but what that spoke to you know we had five guys that averaged double figures didn't have any superstars but we were the consummate team I, I don't think if you look at the true definition of team I don't think City College probably ever had a better team than, than the team we had in 1976 where we truly got everything out of every individual from the first player to the twelfth player and, and I think the same thing can be said about Long Beach City College. Albert said it, you know, the support from the faculty, the administration uh, was just incredible. And no other experience in my life, uh, you know, matches what Long Beach City College gave to me as far as the quality of the people. So thank you again for this award, and uh, thank you for listening to me. And uh, that's it. Thanks. Bye. Here you go. Here you go. Life pass. Okay. And I'm going to have a student come up here for you. Okay. Coming up now to award uh, Dean his plaque is Chris Mejias, freshman uh, this year. He was a guard on our team. Came from Warren High School, who was a two-year varsity captain, the first team all San Gabriel Valley player, and a key returner for next year. Our next inductee uh, is the uh, youngest inductee that we've uh, ever inducted. Here's our first uh, person to be inducted out of uh, uh, this millennium, I suppose you'd say. She played water polo here in 2001 and 2002. Uh, she's our first female water polo inductee and again the youngest uh, Hall of Champions inductee that we've had. She came from a very strong high school and thankfully one of her coaches and her history teacher there, Dave Casa. Dave, raise your hand. Dave was there and he twisted her arm and said, you're coming to Long Beach City College. And uh, boy, was it good for us that she did. Uh, Chris Oding, who is not able to be, he was in a tough spot tonight. It was his wife's birthday. And uh, so he really wanted to be here badly, but he, you know, he, he he, he, he'll just see you tonight, but he'll see her every day from now on. So, uh, Chris uh, sent me a little note and he says, uh, where do I begin? All the success of Long Beach City College women's water polo, and let me just make a comment about what that is, that they've won the conference six out of the last eight years, and they've been uh, at the state championships six out of the last seven years and finished high in most of those years, either winning it or taking second. But all the success of LBCC Women's Water Polo Program is to a great amount due to Cassie. She took a chance on Long Beach City College, which did not yet have, did not yet have established a reputation that it has now. She could have gone to many other colleges. She chose LBCC. She kick-started our program uh, we point to her, to the current team, he says, we always point to her as a model for all of our athletes. Her, her uh, attention to academics, her scholarship, her work ethic, her accomplishment uh, professionally and what she does in life now. And I guess, uh, Cassie, you play in the alumni game every year and he's always talking about how they're always pointing to you as this is, this is our model, this is the prototype you want to shoot for. She went on to play at San Diego State. Uh, where she was a team captain and a scholar athlete. She, then she went on to uh, University of San Francisco to get a Master of Arts in Sports Management. And she's currently working for a very powerful organization, AEG. It seemed like a lot of people, I didn't know what that is, but it's an entertainment group that was actually the group planning um, uh, Michael Jackson's uh, tour. And they're also uh, big with Staples and the, the Kings and all of, and uh, who else is ever in that building there? That, uh, and so she's very much involved professionally in the sports world, and we're very proud to have her back uh, to be inducted. Cassie Zavich. Thanks for everyone coming tonight. And first, I'd like to thank Long Beach City College and the Athletic Department and the Selection Committee for this honor. I'm very privileged to be the first of the millennium or the 21st century and to be the youngest inductee to the Hall of Champions. So thank you. 
I'd like to thank my parents. My mom and dad are here tonight. They're the most important people in my life, and I want to say thank you so much for all of your support, for everything you've done for me, all the support you've given and always led me, but and guided me, but let me make my own decisions. My big brother, who's here, I'm so excited he's here. He still picks on me, he's 14 years older, but I guess it never ends. I wanna thank all my friends who came tonight. Thank you so much, and to my former um, athletes that I played with, Sia and Ashley, I go back to high school and club water polo, so it means a lot that they're here tonight. I just wanted to start off thanking Casa. Dave Casa was my history coach and, or my history teacher in high school and my coach in, in high school. And it's always been a joke that when I first started playing water polo, I was awful. I was, I was never an athletic person. It was kind of something I just got thrown into. And my senior year, when we, you know, right before the CIF championships, it was a joke that my freshman year, I didn't even start on novice. And if you don't even know what novice is, it's like worse than frosh soft. It's just like the extra team where you kind of throw people. And I was just there. And to really work to become an athlete who, was, who excelled at the sport, I owe it all to Dave Casa and to Chris Odin, who's not here. They really brought me into this program and wanted me to come help develop my skills to go to the next level, and that's what I, my ultimate goal was, to go on to play Division One water polo. And so, Casa, thank you so much for guiding me and being hard on me, but always looking for my best interest and wanting me to succeed, and I really appreciate that. So thanks, Casa. And I just want to say that Long Beach City was probably, it was the best experience in my college years. I had, we had so much fun. And Sia and I actually played in at San Diego State together, but we always talk about still the day our days in Long Beach. We just had such a great time. And Long Beach was the place where I was able to develop my skills as an athlete who wasn't ready for Division One, but definitely by the time I left here, I was ready to go play Division One water polo. And we went on and we succeeded. And it was from the skills that we learned here at Long Beach City College that we were able to go on. And I just want to say thank you. I want to say thank you to Connie Sears, um, Chuck, to Mickey, who's not here tonight. And I just want to, it's everyone who's been in my corner, who's been able to push me and help me get to the next level and always knew my potential, even if I didn't. So I just want to say thank you very much. Thanks. Thank you. Here's your uh, life pass. Thank you very talk, much. Let me bring up this yeah. athlete. Coming up to uh, present uh, Cassie her plaque is Sarah Agopian. Sarah is a freshman uh, out of Fullerton High School. It was a key component of, for us this year, first year. Not only did she earn a starting spot on our team, this is Chris Oding comments, but she was also our defensive specialist, a top three scorer, and earned all American honors. Women's water polo has eight, <coughs> excuse me, eight two-time All-Americans over the last decade, and Sarah is on her way to be the ninth. Sarah currently holds a 3.8 GPA and hopes to continue her studies at Go Bears UC, UC Berkeley. So. Thanks, guys. On to track. 1980-1981. We had an intermediate hurdler here by the name of Bernie Holloway. That is one of the most uh, grueling events in track that you could uh, ever compete in, and uh, a, a very uh, hard event. He came here as a, a very successful uh, high school athlete that won some CIF championships as a hurdler, uh, and he right away jumped in in his freshman year to help us win our first ever Long Beach City College uh, State Championship in track and field under Coach Joe Lanning in 1981, I guess it was his sophomore year. Um, he was a state champion that year, and he was the team's high point man. He had an outstanding sophomore year, set the LBCC and Metro Conference records at the conference championship meet. He broke his own record uh, and set a SoCal record the next week at the SoCal meet, running a 50.28. He ran a 45.7 anchor leg in the 1600 meter relay and was the intermediate hurdle champ at the state meet. Went on to uh, run at a strong San Jose State program, 1982 and 83. His junior year, he ran a 49.10 and was fourth in the NC2A. His senior year, he was second in the NC2A. 
He had a shot at the Olympics uh, team for the 1982 Olympics. He made it to the uh, final trials, uh, did not qualify, but he had advanced all the way through all of the other uh, heats and made it into the finals. Uh, then he went on to compete for a couple of years uh, on the European track circuit. Bernie Holloway. Uh, thank you very much. You know, this is really an honor for me to be here. I haven't been back here since 1981, back here in Long Beach and LBCC. So it's really a thrill for me to be here. Uh, my wife wasn't able to make it, but um, our boy Jamar, he's here with me. <clears throat> 12 years old and quite a basketball talent himself. So, but what I really want to talk about is, um, is Coach Joe Lanning. <clears throat> without Joe Lanning's influence, back in high school, I was just a runner, a runner without any s smarts, I guess. But um, Lanning taught me tactics. The tactics of running the race strategy, or running the 400 meter race, which is not, a, not an easy race. It's really not. So you can't, uh, but um, he taught me the tactics of running that race. It made all the difference here at Long Beach, at San Jose State, and beyond. So I, I can't thank Lanning enough. So, and um, actually, um, there was quite a connection because um, my coach at San Jose State, Ernie Bullard, coached at USC as well, along with Ron Ellis. So there was quite a, quite a connection there, so, and, and Joe Lanning as well. But um, I do remember my time here. That's what I want to think about since it's been 29 years. So as I repeat, it's a thrill to be here back on campus. I've walked around here. It's been 29 years. I, I can't overemphasize that. And um, all the races we've had here, the state track meets. Oh, oh you're OK back there. Anyways. Uh, with Coach Lanning and Ron Ellis' help, we just we won two state championships. We had great teams, great teams. Those those were great times, and uh, and uh, I look forward to look forward to the rest of this evening here. I'm going to keep it brief. I didn't have a prepared statement. I just wanted to speak about Lanning and his influence on me. So that's that's all I have. Thank you. Thanks, Bert. Mm -hmm. Here's this proclamation oh. and this uh, life pass for you when you get down here again. Don't stay gone so long. Coming up to uh, present uh, Ernie his, uh, his plaque is Ellis Anderson. Ellis is a two-sport athlete participating in both football and track and field. He was a two-year starter at free safety and, and a corner. Two-year letterman in track and field. His personal best included a 22.1 uh, 22 in the 200 meter and a 49.31 in the 400 meter. He also anchored the four by 100 meter relay team that advanced to the SoCal championship in 08. Ellis also anchored the four by 100 relay team that finished sixth in the state meet with a time of 41.13 in 2008. Now we go to our inductee from the 60s, football player, Willie Martin. Anyone in Long Beach in the 60s knew that name. He was a star player on a great poly team and great city college teams. You're trying to rush me, aren't you? Played, played a big role as a freshman on the 1960 national championship team led the team in receptions. It was the most, uh, voted the most promising freshman. He had a great junior Rose Bowl. Uh, as some of you remember that great Viking uh, win over Tyler, Texas in the junior Rose Bowl, where he caught three touchdown passes in a single game, which was a city college record, uh, and also a Rose Bowl, junior Rose Bowl record. Uh, he had a 100-yard kickoff return uh, in, that, uh, in that game. And uh, settle down, D. I know he only had 15 <laughs> yards of it. I know. 
I know, it was a reverse, but I was told by a coach that saw the game and said, Willie did a nice job setting you up, taking it upfield. So uh, it's a shared record, but he's got his name on it. Set an LBCC uh, career record in receptions, receiving yards, touchdown passes. Went on to play at Long Beach State, where he starred start on a strong eight-win team at Long Beach State. He was second in rushing, pass receptions, and total offense. Uh, was that behind D? Every, everything has been behind D. Everything was behind D? <laughs> <laughs> Not bad company. Uh, he was, he was uh, played on a, the Long Beach Falcons, which was a semi-pro team here in Long Beach where he was the league MVP and led the, team, led the, the league in rushing. Uh, and he's done a lot of coaching with youth. He worked here at the college for a while in the EOPS program. A wonderful man, Willie Martin. Thank you, Chuck. Uh, first of all, I'd like to thank the uh, committee for selecting me for this honor. Uh, I'd like to congratulate the other inductees. And in 1960, uh, I was an 18-year-old freshman here. Since then, I've had three brothers play football here in Long Beach City College, Ed, Leo, and Leroy Giles. I had a nephew, Andre LaBeouf, that played basketball on one of Gary Anderson's teams. I currently have a brother-in-law and a sister who works here at the college. Uh, in fact, my sister, uh, Charlene, is the director of the Child Development Program. Uh, my brother-in-law, Ernie, played on the 1960 team with me, and uh, we played together at Cal State Long Beach. And you know, the older I get, the more friendship and shared memories uh, mean to me. And I, I can't tell you that these guys being here tonight uh, uh, re really touched me. Uh, I came back to Long Beach in 1958. Uh, my family had, uh, was living in Hawaii at the time. I used to live in Long Beach uh, in the Cabrillo homes in the early 50s. And I left in the sixth grade and I came back in the 11th grade. And when I came back to Long Beach, uh, the starting backfield at Long Beach Poly was Willie Brown, Lonzo Irvin, and D. Andrew. And I had just had an operation the year before, so I couldn't play uh, until I got a medical clearance. And I watched every practice through the league and the preseason, I still know the plays that Long Beach Poly was using that year. I never wanted to be a part of anything since then or before then than wanting, wanting to be a part of that team. And I, I was talking to uh, Earl earlier this week. Whenever I talk about Poly football, there's one person that comes in mind, and that man is Dave Levy. Uh, we won the CIF championship in 1958. That's the first time that Long Beach Poly won a championship since 1936. We went undefeated. 1959, we repeated. We went undefeated. Uh, coach Levy, probably the only coach besides Joe Paterno that ever coached from the press box, and Coach Paterno was an elderly man who had injured himself. Coach Levy, those two years, Never coached one play from the field. He was in the press box. He was like a surgeon up there. I remember game, one game where D carried the ball eight times and gained 230 yards, some ridiculous amount. I mean, most coaches have somewhat of an ego. They, you know, they want to be on the side. If you're not in the, on the field, you want to be on the side. And you don't want to be in the press box. And, and the reason I'm mentioning Polly uh, in, in, in a Long Beach City College function is that Ten of us came from that team. It was a seamless transition. There was no problem at all coming from Poly to Long Beach City College. When we got here, uh, there was Jim Stanglin waiting. Uh, Coach Levy played on a 1950 Junior Rose Bowl Championship team at Long Beach City College. Uh, he transferred to UCLA and played on the 1953 UCLA Rose Bowl team for the legendary Red Sanders, Coach Sanders. 
He, when he came back to Poly as an assistant in 1956, coached the team in 57, coached it in 58, and then went to USC and coached with Coach McKay for the next 15 years. And they won four national championships. They was in eight Rose Bowls, and they won five of them. Coach Levy coached with the San Diego Chargers. He coached Barry Sanders with the Detroit. He's coached on every level. And, and, it, and it's, it, I've spent 15, 52 years trying to figure out why were we so successful? Uh, and I thought it was DNI, you know? <laughs> and it really was uh, the coaching we received. We get here at Long Beach City College, Coach Stanglin, Coach Lennon, Coach Kruger. Paul Chafe was a lot younger then, and his hair was a little darker. Uh, but, but the point I'm trying to make, and, and, and someone else uh, talked about it earlier, was that it's, it's coaching. And it took me 52 years to learn that and observe. Uh, the best play I ever seen in the Super Bowl was this year. The onside kick in the second half. That's mind boggling to me. That is the best play I ever seen in the Super Bowl. Those are the kind of things that good coaches provide to their team. You know, good players, good coaching, and luck. Uh, I was, uh, me and Carol, in fact, I was intending to introduce Carol, never too late, Carol, Carol my wife. And, and there's, there's so many of you guys <laughs> that I'm not gonna try to mention any names. But uh, I, I'm gonna tell you this, I really appreciate you being here. I was one of those guys that played on good teams. That's my only claim to fame. Uh, I played on three teams that never lost any games. When we, lo when we won the CF championship in 1959, Polly did not win another championship to 1980. So there, were, there had to be something. And, uh, and uh, because Polly has always had great athletes, uh, Dee's brother Henry, I'm gonna tell you, me and Dee never beat him in anything. I mean, you, we have a thing at Poly. We're, we're proud uh, when we hear about uh, Long Beach Poly having the most players in the NFL. Poly's had great players. I, I was reading one time Poly beat a team, this is back in the 30s, 222 to nothing, a team in Arizona. And it's, uh, it's, it's the, one of the things that uh, community that I come from takes pride in, that's Long Beach Poly and Long Beach City College. Long Beach City College has won 15 uh, national champs. We were the first team to go undefeated. Uh, the 1950 team won the Junior Rose Bowl, the national championship, but our 1960 team was the first one to go undefeated. And I found out in Super Bowl Sunday that our quarterback, Dave Groff, passed away in October. And on behalf of the 1960 team and the coaches, I want to express our belated condolences to his family. Uh, the, uh, Carol and I was eating breakfast uh, one morning. It's always oatmeal. Same thing as my mother used to. <laughs> oatmeal, eat your oatmeal is good for you. That's Carol. So we're eating oatmeal. And so she, she asked me, she said, uh, uh, she started questioning me about football. Now she's been there the whole time. And so I'm feeling a pop quiz coming on. And uh, so I started telling her about uh, football and I got to the Rose Bowl, doing Rose Bowl. And I said, you know, I touched the ball four times. I didn't get tackled the whole game. It was like an out of body experience. What I was trying to say was that the team, Tyler was concerned with D and Lonzo so much that they had forgot about me. So I made the mistake that it was almost like I was invisible. And so I noticed she gave me a strange look and she looked back. She said, you know, if you get up there in front of them people talking about you made yourself invisible, I'm walking out of here. <laughs> <You know? laughs> and so when she, when she turned her back, I mumbled to myself, well, I did. <laughs> you know? so, now, I am, um, I'm not used to being a, an award recipient. Those honors went to Dee, Lonzo, and Willie, and they deserved them. But I'm gonna make a plug because Chick Harris, he received this award two years ago and I saw him the next day and he couldn't wait to tell me, well, I mentioned your name, Willie, and, uh, and that's very flattering. And, um, 
and, and my brother-in-law received this award last year and he mentioned my name. So I'm gonna mention Lonzo's name and I know the committee is probably not slighting Lonzo, but Lonzo and I went to elementary school on the west side. Any speed that I was able to acquire in my athletic thing came as a result of Lonzo chasing me in elementary school. <laughs> they, uh, they say that if you're gonna be a good running back, you gotta have peripheral vision. I developed peripheral vision looking around the corner to see if Lonzo uh, was, <laughs> was anywhere to chase me. <laughs> so, I, I, I say that to say this, and, and I know the committee is not slighting Lonzo, because I, I know Lonzo, but I want to publicly uh, say, Lonzo led the 1960 team in rushing. It was uh, Coach Stanley, and I don't know who's responsible for doing this, but I, I, I was looking at uh, a progr the program, and going into the Junior Rose Bowl game, Lonzo and D had carried the ball almost the exact same number of times. Lonzo had carried the ball one time more than D had. Both of them had rushed for over 800 yards. Uh, so you could see why they could f forget me in that game, because if you're coaching, those are the first two people you're gonna try to stop. I mean, the balance uh, that, that had occurred in that team over the course of that nine games was amazing. That's good coaching. Coach Stanglin has won four national championships. He's coached seven bowl games and won all seven. I personally think his best coaching job was at Cal State Long Beach when he had the, doing the Leon Burns and Terry Metcalf air because we played at Long Beach. We, couldn't, we had a very good team our senior year. We was eight and two, but we could not beat Don Coriel's San Diego State team. We could not beat Homer Beatty's Santa Ana, I mean, not Santa Ana, LA State team. And we played them in the last conference game, and if we could have won the game, we would have been conference champs. We had the ball on the one yard line with first down, and when, we, when they took over the ball, we was on the 12 yard line. We lost, we lost yards every play for four downs. And uh, I remember that game more than any game that I ever played in. You know, I know I'm beginning to talk too much, so I'm gonna thank you, and this is a great honor, and thank you. <laughs> Don't run out. Right. Good job. Here's your life pass. Coming up to uh, honor Willie with his plaque is Tyler Tuiasa Sopo. He's an all-stater. Stay up here, Willie. He's an all-stater out of Marina High School in the state of Washington. He transferred from UCLA. He's a quarterback, be a sophomore next year, projected to be the starting quarterback, and have a great year. I think uh, Willie's got a few stats stashed away up in that head of his. <laughs> now we go to uh, the sport of volleyball. And our next inductee, Alan Treffery, played here at City College in 1980. And in 1982, he was a, a setter on our team. For those of you that haven't uh, seen volleyball played or know much about volleyball. The setter is is at the center of the team's uh, offense. You know, he's the one that puts the ball up at the net and uh, makes it uh, accessible for somebody to kill it. He distributes the ball, keeps the opponent de the defense guessing, all of those good things. He did a great job here. Led our team t uh, both years he was here to conference championships, also to two different state championships. He was recognized with all conference honors both years. In his sophomore year, he was the captain in the uh, City College team. He was our Viking MVP. He was the conference player of the year. He was all state. So he, he really kind of did it all. After City, he went on to play at Long Beach State, and then he played at Cal State Fullerton. And then he was up at the Major McGeorge School of Law up at the University of Pacific in Stockton where he uh, was involved in starting up a club team there, which eventually turned into an NC2A team. Uh, so volleyball has been his passion. Uh, he's played uh, 
for years uh, he played uh, winning a lot of grass, sand, and hard court contests. He's been a coach, he was assistant coach here at City College one year. He coached at his Wilson High School uh, and, and other spots. So volleyball is uh, at the center of Alan Treffrey's life, and we honor him now. Wrestling with paperwork, my life story. Well, good evening to all, and I thank you for all co for coming tonight. Um, I imagine the first order of business is for me to dispel any misconceptions circling about. Indeed, uh, I did play volleyball for the school, and that's what I'm being honored for tonight. Uh, therefore, this induction has nothing to do with pie eating or sumo wrestling, which I heard was rumored about tonight. Hey, you got to go with a little belly humor, you know. Oh, thank you. Uh, it's not every day that a man is granted such an honor of being inducted into such a prestigious athletic association, especially one connected to a school so rich in athletic tradition. I'm humbled by this honor and by the efforts of all of you who came tonight. Also, my sincere thanks to those members of the Hall of, Champ of, Hall of Champions <clears throat> who voted me in. And as for those members who didn't vote me in, please remember not to blame me for any x lax that may have mysteriously made into your beverages. Okay, okay, I'm sorry. Got to try the jokes at first. They say that when you, you know, start a speech, okay. Anyways, I could go many directions with this speech tonight. However, every time about, I thought about giving the speech, I ultimately returned to the same theme. And that was a theme of immense gratitude. Uh, to everyone involved in blessing me with the wealth, the wealth of life I experienced at Long Beach City College. Uh, I could, it's hard for me to specify which moment was really the best for me at City, not because there were so few great times, but because there were so many. A few of the highlights included making so many lifelong friends centered around this volleyball program. Such a gift alone and nothing else is more than this man could have ever expected, especially since I merely showed up to knock a volleyball back and forth over a net. So many of you people I've come to know and love associated with this program are some of the greatest folks and the dearest friends I've ever known. I thank God with a sincere heart for your impact on my life and for your friendships. However, it's not just dear friends that I've made here at Long Beach City that, I, that has made my time here so memorable. I also enjoyed the rare experience of playing with two of my oldest and dearest friends in Bob Severlick and Pat Dunn, who are both here tonight. Playing with new faces and making new friends is indeed a great experience. However, uh, to share the opportunity to play intercollegiate level sports with childhood friends is an additional kick that makes the fun of competition even sweeter. Also, it goes without saying, although I'm going to say it anyway, that I consider it a rare privilege to have played for Coach Gary Jacobson. Coach Jake was more than a great coach, but a true life molder. Teachers and coaches often seek to genuinely make a difference in the lives of their students and athletes they encounter. Jake, you helped me experience so much in life, hard work, perseverance, teamwork, how to handle with grace both victory and defeat, and perhaps most importantly, to never give, never give up irrespective of odds. I truly feel as if you helped me be a better man both on and off the court. I thank you, Jake, for your guidance, for your integrity, the oftentimes needed swift kick in the backsides, and most importantly, for your friendship. However, perhaps the most amazing, what is most amazing is that concurrent with so many wonderful experiences I've had here, I was privileged in participating in two teams that won both the state and league championships. As previously said, I showed up here as a kid because I enjoyed batting a volleyball back and forth over a net, and yet I came away from City with wealth far greater than I ever could have imagined. Reflecting upon the teams I played with, both of the teams of 80 and 82 had a lot of talent. But it takes more than just talent and hard work to finish on top. Everything has to fall into place just right. With so many talented players and coaches in the league and in the state, to end up at the top of the heap, even once, takes not only the tangible elements like ability and hard work, but for those things I consider to be the right intangible elements to all fall, uh, properly fall in line. As far as those obvious tangible elements that it takes to win, so many of the factors can easily be undone by those intangible elements, like bad breaks, 
bad chemistry, bad blood between players or coaches, ego problems, untimely slumps, biased referees, keys, <laughs> right, remember, keys to uh, injuries to key players and sometimes even the mere bounce of the ball. In my experience, I've learned that for a team to win in a highly competitive field, it is those intangible factors that seem to be the sort of glue that tie in all others. Examples, with our 80 team, we found ourselves in the first round of the playoffs against Golden West, losing the first, game, first two games and down nine to one in the third and decisive game. Would have been decisive had we lost. Golden West was dominating us at every turn and we had no answers. We were on the cusp of bowing out early and if not for one of those intangible elements that changed everything around, at 9-1 uh, in game three, Jake made a slight lineup adjustment that brought a different chemistry to the floor, which literally ignited our team and caused a complete swing in momentum. We were on the verge of going out quietly into the night, and yet our season would have been over. But something as hard to quantify as chemistry between players turned it all around, and we came back from behind, took the match, and later the state championship. Another example was the 82 team is a good one. We were playing uh, in the semifinals of the state tournament against Orange Coast College. We were down 13 to 1 in the fifth and decisive game. I'll never forget that we were seemingly in a state of shock by OCC's dominant play and the lopsided score. Again, it seemed we, be, we appeared to be within moments of elimination. However, I'll never forget one of our opponents, a gentleman by the name of Steve Friedman, who's now a friend, Larry knows him back there, um, looked under the net and made a comment mocking us, calling us a bunch of sorry old men. Now, I cannot fully explain to you how uh, one comment changed, or excuse me, that comment translated into the likes of a properly paced cattle prod. But the team's attitude openly changed from shock and awe to a laser-like focus. That one moment ignited a spark of renewed life and concentration in the team that changed the entire course of the match in our history. We came back from 13-1 in game five and won the match. Again, an intangible element as unquantifiable as an insult somehow worked to our benefit. One last instance comes to mind. I remember in game five of the El Camino match in the 82 finals, we were down 17-16, and El Camino was serving for match point. One of our outside hitters, Rich Fair, now Dr. Rich Fair, Stretching to pass, the El Camino serve stretched so far, he literally collapsed to the floor. He overpassed the ball right into the waiting arm swing of All-American hitter Brent Frohoff, the best hitter on El Camino's team, and the ball went right back straight down. Therefore, El Camino's best hitter had a free swing that would, in any other case, 99.9% .9 of the cases, been game and match point. Well, to my utter amazement, he crushed the overset miraculously hit the same rich fare on the arm as he was getting to his feet, and the result was a perfect pass and a side out. Uh, it was perhaps the most amazing stroke of good fortune I'd ever seen in sports. Random good fortune, pure, pure luck. Um, here was another somewhat intangible element that smiled upon us just at the right time that made the difference. My point in reliving these types of events is they exemplify some of the intangible elements in action in which the bouncing ball bounced just right for us. So why is it that these intangible elements worked for our favor and we won and not another team? Yes, we worked hard and sacrificed, but then again, so did others. We had no monopoly on the desire to win, nor were we invulnerable to injuries that could have somehow changed the course of our destinies, nor were we somehow immune to the mysteries that is the adversity of the unfriendly bouncing ball. Each year, there were several other teams who certainly were good enough to win, so why us? Where I'm going with this leads me to how people label these intangible elements of all these things that fall just right into place. Various terms have been used, some calling it fate, others calling it destiny, and some say it's karma, others call it pure dumb luck. Well, as previously said, uh, the theme of this speech is gratitude for all those responsible for a great time they had this institution. Well, I like to think that the intangible elements that all worked in our favor for us and to win those two championship seasons as well as every other gift I received associated to this place, including the friendships of so many of you wonderful people, as being touched by the grace of God. And for that, I'm forever grateful. Of all these great experiences I've had and now tonight, I'm, being, I'm having another being inducted to the Hall of Champions. It's probably an understatement to say that I owe Long Beach City College and the people here are dead of gratitude for so many things that perhaps it can never be repaid. 
Of course, no acceptance speech of this nature would be complete without thanking my teammates, for I'm reminded of the old adage that there's no I in the word team. For that immutable truth, I wish to express my gratitude to all my teammates, uh, who they had the honor of playing with them both in the 80 and 82 seasons, many of which were able to make it tonight. I thank you guys very much. To all my teammates from both years, I thank you for making so many of these great experiences possible and giving me memories that have kept my heart smiling for nearly 30 years. It was a privilege and a joy to play with you and a gift to have your friendships. The chemistry of each of our team, although unique to each, was truly fantastic. Simply put, we had more fun than we knew what to do with. First to the 82 team, league and state champions, uh, counselor Braden Bodner, my oldest friend, doubles partner, fellow Hall of Champions inductee, and most impressively, Olympic gold medalist Bob Stavertlich. Pat Dunn, who if not for Pat and his stepfather Al Larson, who was here tonight earlier, I'm sorry he had to leave. But if not for them, I may not have had the opportunity as a 13-year-old kid to take volleyball to the next level. Thank you guys for that. Jack King, Steve Neptune, Dr. Rich Fair, Steve Merrill, Dean Krolick, Todd Southwick, and Rich Reeves. Rick Reeves, to all you all, my deepest thanks for much of what has been discussed here tonight would not have been possible without you. On a related note, the 82 team, a guy who I hope was going to be here tonight, and he wasn't, I just want to thank Mike Brawley for his input on the team as well. He was the assistant coach in 1980, or 82, excuse me. To the 1980 league and state championship team, I came into my freshman year of the program with you guys with my eyes wide open. The time you shared with me helped me understand the game better, build my confidence, and your deeply competitive natures and friendly support helped my game and my life rise to higher levels. My thanks to you, Mike Nelson, Kurt Shasker, Rick Reeves, Walt Shakir, Ralph Langevin, John Perry, Steve Hunt, Craig Obenauer, and fellow Hall of Champions inductee, the late Jack Hinton. Now, I know I've likely exceeded my allotted five minutes to speak tonight, or somewhere around there. I see, imagine that a lawyer going too far, right? Talking too much, I can't imagine it. And you guys are lucky to get here by Christmas, as far as I'm concerned, but anyways. Um, I would like to take just a moment to be serious and reflect upon my old friend Jack Hinton. Sadly, Jack passed away approximately one month ago. As many of you know Jack, he was inducted to the Hall of Champions last year. As any person who, would know, who knew Jack in competition will remember, Jack was a man of incredible athletic prowess and one of, one of great and fierce competitiveness. And of course, knowing Jack, he'd always let you know about it. Uh, I do not think that there was ever a sport in which Jack competed that he did not excel, and more so because of his incredibly competitive spirit, would do almost anything to win. When he played with us on the 1980 team, in spite of the tremendous talent of my teammates, Jack was the true go-to guy in the squad. As I was refining my setting skills, sometimes sorely missing the mark, there was Jack with a remarkable play to compensate for otherwise a mediocre set. He was a solid national team caliber athlete playing at the JC level, true head, truly head and shoulders above any player in the league. I think it was due to his competitive nature that there was times he could be a handful, but then again, it was the same competitive spirit that acted as the fuel of confidence for our entire team in the 1980 season. In spite of that competitive spirit, there was rarely a time that Jack failed to take the opportunity to concern himself with making me and others around him better players. While at Long Beach City, he was incredibly supportive to me, and even when we went head to head on the court, or even if I was fortunate to get the upper hand. Jack was a warm-hearted man who often was the life of the party and a lot of fun to be around. Perhaps one of the most powerful feelings I remember is about the pride I had of having him as a friend and a teammate. In short, I do miss those times with Jack, and if the good Lord would permit him to hear my words just one time, I, dearly, I deeply thank you, Jack, for all you contributed to my betterment as an athlete and as a man. Lastly, it would not be right to acknowledge, uh, not be right to, to uh, miss acknowledging the most influential and supportive element in my development as an athlete and as a man, and one of the key reasons why I'm here tonight. That element has been my family, and especially my parents, Charles and Renata. Although long gone, my parents gave me the option to choose my direction and then supported my decisions with love and sometimes a much needed firm hand. So much of the good things I've experienced when I've become as tied to their love and support. In closing, I thank you all for coming tonight. You've truly humbled me with your kindness and support. God bless. Thank you. Thank you, thank you sir. Thanks, sir. Here's your uh, proclamation. Get this nightmare out of the way. <laughs>
and this uh, life pass. Coming up to uh, present Alan with his plaque is Jonathan Burkhart. Jonathan is from Lakewood High School, a graduate there where he was a first uh, team all more league uh, player for a couple of years and was on a fifth place junior Olympic team. He's a gray shirt this year. He'd probably rather be up at Pierce with the team tonight, but uh, this is his assigned duty tonight. So congratulations. Thank you, Thank you. Concluding the evening with our uh, last inductee, Larry Reisbeek, uh, football coach that's uh, really uh, one to uh, put in the books. This is not the first time that Larry has been recognized for his outstanding coaching abilities. Uh, with over uh, 200 career wins throughout his career in high school and, and junior college and Cal State Long Beach, it's pretty understandable that he would be in some Hall of Fames. In 2006, he was inducted into the California Junior College Football Coaches Hall of Fame. And uh, in 2009, the College of Canyons Hall of Fame, a college he coached at previously. 83 of those 200 wins were here as a Viking head football coach, which is a, a city college record for a head coach. Over his 11 years, he won 71% of his games. He took Long Beach City College to eight bowl games, a record six straight years. They went to, a, to bowls, won six consecutive, or won six conference championships, uh, guided them to the 1995 National Championship, the fifth in the City College history. He was voted the South Coast Conference Coach of the Year Award twice. Now that award is an award given by the athletic directors to the outstanding coach considering all teams, and twice he was uh, the recipient of that award. He's now the athletic director. Uh, when I was the athletic director here, uh, I felt like he was already an athletic director, uh, certainly with the football program. I owe him a debt of gratitude for his outstanding leadership, the way he worked with hundreds of players. I know this is an honor that he um, is happy to receive, but I know, just knowing Larry, I know that the thing that gives him the most pleasure is the hundreds of ball players that he's helped move on to in scholarships to uh, programs from City College. So let's welcome Larry Reisbeck. Thank you, Chuck. You're looking at probably one of the most fortunate individuals uh, in this room. I look back on how my career went and what I was able to do and the many, many young men and coaches that I was able to work with. What a great life. I want to start first by thanking the committee for inducting me into the hall. I'd like to thank our school board. I'd like to thank our president for their support, support needed. I would like to thank Chuck McFerrin for hiring me, for putting this all together, and what a great job he has done. I'd like to thank the best dean in the world, and I thank Dr. John Philpaw, if you could raise his hand. I'd like to thank the other half, Connie Sears. I don't know where Connie is, she's probably working, but. I'd like to thank Connie Sears for all her support. Christy, uh, Lucy, uh, the people that have worked with me here that enabled me to have a great time in athletics. I go back and I think about when my journey began, and I think about a young guy that didn't know much about sports, came from a family that was very poor. They didn't know anything about sports. But I loved football. I loved everything about it. I would sacrifice my life for it, and I met this beautiful little gal when I was 16 years old. Um, probably was love at first sight, although I didn't know it. I had to go through some, some experiences of, of not being the best uh, football player, uh, student. Um, but with this lady, I asked her to marry me. Uh, she's here now. Uh, she's my soulmate, my partner. We'll be married uh, 51 years tomorrow. Yeah. 
She's the one that picked me up when I said, uh, oh, I'm going to go be a business major. She says, no, you're not. You're going to be a coach. That's what you've always dreamed of. She's the one that kept encouraging me. She's the one that worked while I went to college and scholarship, and she was, in her own right, a great scholar. Heck, I was just an average guy, just trying to struggle. But when our two little kids were, when I went to college, uh, my first, Mike Reisbig. I'd like to introduce Mike Reisbig and his wife, Lori. I'm going to talk a little more about Mike as we go along, and I'm very proud that he went in the same profession I did. I'd like to thank my daughter, Stephanie Devine. She would have made one hell of a coach had she been in the coaching profession. As it is now, she's some big exec running about 35 people and coaching them instead of coaching. But Stevie Devine, softball player, also a gymnast. I'd like to thank my brother-in-law, Bob Christie and his wife, Gloria. Bob, who helped me pack all my belongings and everything and go to Washington State on a scholarship. And we slept along the side of the road. We got there, didn't know where we were going to stay. And the coaches at that time helped me out and helped me go on. The journey. The journey started when I graduated from college. I wanted to go. I had a decision to make pro football, coach, what have you. Made the decision coaching because in those days when you signed a pro football contract, it was a $500 bonus, and it was not a no-cut contract. So I could make $3,800 coaching or $4,000 going out and playing pro football. I took the coaching. We went to a small school in Oregon, Sandy, Oregon. Didn't know a thing. Learned a lot from my players and learned a lot from the fellow coach from there. I came to California, and we went ahead and went to William S. Hart High School. And from William S. Hart High School, I went to College of the Canyons. And I'd like to introduce somebody that I hired at College of the Canyons, and then went with me to Pasadena. A great coach in his own right. He coached Mike, the rabbit, Joe Roscoe. Joe? As we continue on the journey from College of the Canyons to Pasadena, Joe was at Pasadena. We were fairly successful. And then over to Long Beach State, then to Orange Coast College, and then finally to Long Beach City College. I knew when I was at Long Beach State University that the people of Long Beach were second to none. They cared about their players. They cared about their coaches. They cared about their school. Even though Long Beach State did drop their program and I was there during some hard times, there were wonderful people in Long Beach. And I always said, if I ever get the opportunity, I want to come back. So I did have the opportunity. I was fortunate enough to go through the interviews and be chosen as a coach. And then that's where we really had a lot of fun. I found a couple coaches already on the staff, characters in their old right. No wonder we did so good. They're both Hall of Fame coaches. I'd like to introduce uh, Paul Chafe and his wife Donna, and thank Paul, and Jake Jacobson, his wife Diana. They've been wonderful. You ought to see those two coach together. When they start to argue, I used to just move them over in the background, take the team and run the team while they finished their argument. Then we came back and we settled on what we were going to run. I also like to thank Jerry Jaso. I was able to talk Jerry Jaso and to leave him Pauley High School to take over for me when I retired. And Jerry came in, won a couple of championships, is now working on Mike Reisbeck's staff, and they're doing a wonderful job. The football program is in good hands. I'd like to thank the players. And there's got three players here now that I'd personally like to thank. I'd like to thank the hundreds of players that I had. The hundreds of players that let me go ahead and coach them, the hundreds of players that chose my profession, 35 or 40 are in the high school, 15 are in the junior college, and there's five in the major college ranks. But I'd like to thank these players that are sitting here right now. First of all, Neo Aoga, back in the back. <laughs> Willie, when you say uh, it takes coaches, not players, there's an idea. That takes players, not coaches. Neil's an All-American, set all the past receiving records. I'd like to thank Albert Dorsey. Albert Dorsey wanted to be a running back. 
and for somebody to accept the fact that he's going to go over to defense and help run a pretty good defense for two years and do what he has done. His little counselor who came all this way from Palm Springs to be here, I must have talked to her a half a dozen times trying to convince her to convince Albert to come and play for Long Beach City College. And Larry Cresselius. Larry Cresselius is kind of, Jake and I were just arguing how Larry Cresselius got on our team. And Jake said, well, no, I saw him in an intramural class. And I said, no, I saw him. But I went up and asked Larry, I said, Larry, how come you're not playing football? Larry says, well, nobody asked me. I said, did you play in high school? He goes, no. I said, why? He says, because nobody asked me. I said, well, I'm asking you. So he came out. And we had three or four really good receivers. He blended right in. He was always there. He didn't start right at the beginning. But when it came down to the national championship game, one of our ace receivers went down, then a second receiver went down. Larry Cresselius came in, caught eight balls, and scored the winning touchdown from Neil Ioga to win a national championship in 1995. So anyway, it's been a quite a journey. I'm very, very happy to be a part of Long Beach City College tradition. Uh, you folks are awesome. The players have been awesome, and the coaches have been awesome. I got rewarded every day I went to work. I got to talk to the players, see them develop, talk to my fellow coaches. The basketball coach, can you believe that? A basketball coach and a football coach getting along. But Gary Anderson was always there. We'd rag each other at all the booster club meetings and so forth. But the most important thing, of course, is the development of the players, to see them go on, to see them mature as men. And I'm going to reflect on one thing that hit home with me in the 70s. I knew it was there, but not till this happened that it really hit home and sealed my commitment to coaching and trying to do things right. I had a young man named Mike Sanders that played for me at College of the Canyons. He was a free safety, a free safety from Granada Hills High School. He had everything, a little, little undersized, so he only got offered Division II and three scholarships. Mike Sanders, good looking, the girls loved him, smart, had grades. He was one of those rare individuals. Well, he played for me and he helped us win the 1975 championship at College of the Canyons. He got his dream, he got a scholarship to Arizona State. And so I was proud of Mike. You know, he did give up two minor league scholarships to get the scholarship to Arizona State. But about, about oh, three quarters of a year later, when all this was through, I got a phone call from Mr. and Mrs. Sanders, and they asked me if I wouldn't mind going to the hospital and talking to Mike, He'd been very ill. And they told me, don't be startled because he's lost a great deal of weight. He has cancer of the spine. So I went there and what I saw, I could hardly hold back my tears. Here he is, just 19 years old, in bed, must have weighed 95 pounds. And he recognized my sorrow, saw my tears, and he says, Coach, Coach, don't feel bad, don't feel bad. You know, I've been 19 years old, I've been blessed to play the game of football. I've been blessed to be with the team, I've been blessed to be with my coaches. He asked me to do his eulogy, but what a wonderful thing and what an impact we as coaches have on players. From that point on, every team I've been at, I always had the most inspirational player of the year, Mike Sanders. But what an inspiration. And that's what I've always tried to do, tried to make it a first class, do things right, and have my players go out better than they came in. I want to thank everybody. Thank you. Appropriately coming up to uh, give Larry his plaque is our current head coach, Long Beach City College, his son, Mike Reisbeck. Thank you. Thanks, Larry. 
Well, at this time, I would like all of, uh, of the inductees tonight to come forward. This is a photo op for those who have your cameras and you want to get some pictures. Um, and we will officially install all of the inductees, take some photographs, and uh, call it good night. So if everybody would come forward at this moment. Okay, we got everybody up here. So to make it official, let me say that by the powers vested to me by Long Beach City College, I hereby proclaim that you, the class of 2010, are officially installed in the Long Beach City College Hall of Champions. Congratulations. Thank you, everybody. It's a great night. Thanks.